Hello everyone, it's Kitty. Today I have decided to take a dive into the origins of Yorvik once more by replaying some of the classic CD games from the early 2000s. And I couldn't believe how many similarities there were to Star Stable Online when you really look hard enough. For a little background, Star Stable Online was originally developed by four different companies. Pixel Tales, Hidden Entertainment, Stabenfeld, and Oblivion. The world of Jorvik was established six years before Star Stable Online's debut. Through three different computer game series, Starshine Legacy, Star Academy, and Star Stable. Four games would be available in each series. These CD games were originally produced for the subscribers of Penny Girl, a book club formed in the 2000s for adolescent horse lovers. The companies I previously mentioned were responsible for the development of these CD games as well. And when they finally made the decision to invest in an online version of the Jorvik franchise, a lot of material was reused from the previous CD games, whether it be storyline or actual assets within the game. The four companies would still hold creative control over Star Stable Online until 2015, when the opportunity to become one large entity presented itself. This was made possible due to the overwhelming success and financial support from players and investors over the course of three years. With the creative restrictions and contracts out of the way, the Star Stable team were able to slowly merge away from what material the CD games had offered them for so long. Which meant dramatically updating assets within their game, and even waning away from the original storyline that built the foundation of the Jorvik franchise in 2005. Could that have been their downfall? I'll leave that inquiry for another video. Right now, Let's explore some similarities you may have noticed from the games that started it all. First and foremost, let's get some of the more obvious connections out of the way. In all four of the Starshine Legacy games, you get to meet and play as all four of the Soul Riders we have become very familiar with in Star Stable Online, as well as their Soul Horses. Not only that, we learn about Jorvik's greatest threat that take form in the Dark Riders. In the first edition of Starshine Legacy, where you play as Lisa, Sabine is the main antagonist. Whether we encounter her in the high school attempting to frame Linda for stealing her cell phone, or her chasing us through the woods at night in a cloak. In the second edition of Starshine Legacy, we play as Linda, the show jumper whose intellect always seems to help her out of sticky situations. Mr. Sands plays a minor part in Linda's game, but one can argue we spend most of our time as Linda investigating Pine Hill Mansion, a place we have yet to discover in Star Stable Online. In the third edition of Starshine Legacy, we play as a disciple of the Sun Circle, Anne. The first level introduces us to Jessica, as she is determined to sabotage Anne's modeling photo shoot. And in the fourth and final edition of Starshine Legacy, we play as the loyal yet mischievous Alex. Along the way, we are introduced to her kid brother as well who just happens to be James. Alex must protect him from his arch-rival Buck and his accomplice, Katya. She challenges Alex to a race in Scarecrow Hill, which Katya inevitably wins and James pays the price. Amongst the three game series, Starshine Legacy is the closest to Star Stable Online in terms of storyline. As Star Stable Online was built off of Starshine Legacy's original plot. Let's move on to the next series release, Star Academy, where we follow the lives of aspiring musicians in Jorvik City Brittany, Kiyomi, Kevin, and Lisa. Yes, you heard that right. 
The red-headed rock star Lisa Peterson is one of the playable characters in Star Academy. This game series is a little less focused on horses, although we do spend some time at Jorvik Stables in the second and third edition of Star Academy. And the final CD game series to be released in 2009 was Star Stable. Not to be confused with the abbreviated Star Stable Online. It also goes by Star Stable Offline or Star Stable The Season Riders. This series is the closest to what Star Stable Online originally looked like in the early days of development. As you will come across a lot of horses, clothes, buildings, and some characters that were later reused in Star Stable Online. If you take a look at the first ever promotional trailer for Star Stable Online, released in 2010, you can see the uncanny similarities of the season writers. It was almost like the intention was to release an online installment of the season writers, set in a brand new section of Jorvik. The MMO was set to release in late 2011, and by that time, the developers had already made drastic changes to the game that squashed the resemblance of the 2009 counterpart, such as introducing a brand new character model with a wide variety of customization options, and removing the previous starter horse model entirely. The starter horse prototype could still be found in Star Stable years later, through a speech bubble icon prompted when you get too close to machinery your horse is afraid of. Star Stable The Season Riders hosted a variety of different horse models, one of which was converted into Star Stable Online and made to be our very first horse. Another horse model was made to be a quote-unquote NPC horse, a placeholder to chill in stalls or paddocks to make the world of Jorvik more lively. This is just scraping the surface of similarities shared between Star Stable Online and its original franchise. Let's dive into some more obscure affinities, shall we? Truthfully, I believe a real underrated character in the Star Stable universe would have to be Herman, a respected equestrian and the renowned owner of Jorvik Stables. He has been a faithful ally to the Soul Riders since the very beginning, and has appeared in nearly every game of the Jorvik franchise. We met Herman for the first time back in 2005, during the first edition of Starshine Legacy. We became reacquainted with him in Star Stable Online when he managed to reunite Alex with Tin Can amidst a quest released in early 2013. In this quest, Herman arrives along the shoreline next to the riding hall after departing Captain Bruce's ship with Tin Can. We are scheduled to meet him for the first time and he explains how he has helped the Soul Riders out of multiple dilemmas in the past. An obvious nod to the previous Starshine Legacy games and all of the adventures experienced. He guarantees that we will meet again soon and sends Ten Can on his way with us. Later in October of 2013, the Harvest Counties is open to the public, and that includes the renowned Jorvik Stables, where we have the opportunity to reunite with Herman in his home. But did you know that Herman actually has two brothers? Mr. Wetton, a music producer and owner of a world-famous record label called Blacklight Records. We meet him in the third installment of Star Academy, titled Breakthrough. It is explicitly said in the dialogue that Mr. Wetton is related to Herman. Therefore, it is safe to assume that Herman's surname must be Wetton. And Coyote, who is a former professional rodeo performer in the United States. We meet him in the fourth Star Stable game, titled The Summer Riders. While we're on the topic of Herman, let's shine some spotlight on his most prized possession. Jorvik Stables, the most prestigious riding academy on the island. 
Yorvik Stables was first introduced in Volume 1 of Starshine Legacy, Mystery of the Soul Riders, where we play as Lisa Peterson, a city girl trying to make her way around in Yorvik. The renowned writing stable made an appearance in the following three Starshine Legacy games, as well as Star Academy 2 and 3. Yorvik Stables was later reintroduced in Star Stable, The Autumn Riders, where in the beginning sequence, Herman greets you as you arrive at the Academy. It was revealed in September 2013 that the upcoming area in Star Stable Online would be exploring the Harvest Counties, which included Yorvik Stables. The area was set to release in October of 2013 and would expand upon Herman's story and put us on the track of finding Lisa. The layout of Yorvik Stables in Star Stable Online is nearly identical to the CD games. They made sure to include the special arena too. I believe we all have found ourselves jamming out to the music that plays in the hair salons in Star Stable Online. Allow me to tell you the origin of these very catchy songs. In Star Academy, you have the option to play as Brittany, Kiyomi, or Lisa. Each girl has a very different aesthetic, and that can be evident when you observe their bedrooms, which you automatically spawn inside once you choose a girl to play as. In Brittany's room, this song can be heard playing in the background, which is the same song that you hear inside multiple salons in Star Stable Online. In Kiyomi's room, this song can be heard playing in the background. This song plays inside Captain's Cut, a hair salon located in Cape West Fishing Village. In Lisa's room, this song can be heard playing in the background. This is the same song that is played inside Cool Cuts the Rockin' Hair Salon in Silverglade Village. But wait, who the heck is that? This NPC looks way too stylish to not be important to the story somehow. Well, it is true. She isn't very important to the story in Star Stable Online, but she had a pretty big role in Star Academy. Her name is Lilith, alongside her partner Lance. 
They are the main antagonists throughout all four of the Star Academy games. Whether it be sabotaging your auditions or talking trash, this duo truly played the villain well. On the other hand, Lance did end up getting a small role in Star Stable Online's story. Since the early days of Star Stable Online, Lance was placed upon a barrel in Silverglade Village as a sort of easter egg to those who had played the previous CD games in the franchise. Later on, he was given his very own questline concerning a crush he has on a girl named Mary. We are enlisted to play messenger for them and help exchange gifts. In Starshine Legacy, we spend most of our time in Jorvik High School. It is the introductory point to every game in the series, and within the school holds a very eerie library. Does this library look familiar? Maybe because you've seen it at the Silverglade Manor in Star Stable Online. If you're a dedicated Star Stable Online player, you must have met Derek the Postman already. He is Jorvik's most well-respected postman, and someone the community can really count on. Nowadays, he stands outside the post office in Silverglade Village. If you look close enough, there is a framed photograph accompanying Derek at the post office. When you click on the picture frame, the photograph expands and a chat bubble is prompted. There is a note on the photo dated three years ago. A plus C, the Angels of Fashion Week, hyphen D. Those wings must have been added in Photoshop, right? Immediately, curiosity overwhelms the mind. What does this mean? Where did Derek get this picture? And why were wings added to the photo? Well, for the full explanation, we're going to have to go back to 2005 for the release of Starshine Legacy's third installment, The Legend of Pandoria. This game follows soul writer Anne Von Blissen and her journey to stardom. In the first level of the game, we arrive as Anne at a photo shoot for a world famous perfume company. The photographer is none other than Derek the Postman. The two become acquainted during the photo shoot. Anne invites Derek to photograph her in Concord at Jorvik Stables later in the day. During this photo shoot, Derek manages to capture the strange photo that now rests in his post office. It was later revealed in Starshine Legacy 3 that Derek actually works for the Jorvigan government, and his camera is able to capture things that the naked eye can't see explaining why a mystical aura surrounded Anne and Concord in the photograph, in addition to the glowing wings. This is described as their inner essence as Soul Rider and Soul Horse. During the game's epilogue, Derek reveals to Anne that he's been sent to keep an eye on her, to make sure Dark Core does not manipulate Anne and Concord's special abilities. Truthfully, I believe we need a deeper explanation of Derek's background. For a character so close to one of the main protagonists, he has a lot of mystery surrounding him. He's been a part of Star Stable Online since the beginning, and has been involved in a variety of quest lines, including the once annual Valentine's Day event. Derek is a character with a lot of potential to explore. Questions left unanswered for the better half of 20 years. One of the more forgotten places of Star Stable Online has to be Jorvik City. It is quite an unusual area as it goes against the whole concept of Star Stable Online, exploring the open world of Jorvik on horseback. Jorvik City is an area that can only be discovered on foot. I believe this was a risky experiment for Star Stable to put all of their time and resources in, but upon release, it paid off! So many excellent storylines were accompanied with the debut of Jorvik City, unique features, and exclusive items. Jorvik City was an easter egg in itself, as it had been mentioned in quest dialogue and even explored in the older games. Star Stable paid homage to the players who grew up with the CD games 
as they managed to include many characters and locations from the original franchise upon release of Yorvik City. Starting with Leonardo's Ice Cream Parlor. This 80s-inspired diner originated from the first Star Academy game, Audition. Both the students and teachers spend their free time at Leonardo's in Star Academy, and now it can be enjoyed by all writers of Jorvik. Speaking of teachers in Star Academy, the renowned dance teacher, Miss Rita, can be found in Star Stable Online teaching a dance class in Aiden's Plaza. Miss Rita has portraits of herself hung inside her dance studio in Star Academy. You can now find them inside the drama theater in Star Stable Online. Let's talk about another location in Star Stable Online that is writers only. Jorvik City Mall, released in February of 2015. It is a super fun shopping destination that has since been mildly forgotten about due to the introduction of the Global Shop. Jorvik City Mall was first introduced in the earliest Star Academy game, Audition. As you can tell, the layout is nearly identical to the mall in Star Stable Online. Although, Star Stable Online gave Jorvik City Mall a few texture updates as well as a second and third floor to explore and shop. In Star Academy, the students took the opportunity to use the stage inside the mall to perform. When the mall was implemented into Star Stable Online, they kept the stage and reintroduced us all to one of Jorvik's most famous musicians. Raptor is a character that was introduced in the third installment of Star Academy. He was a rising star signed to Dark Chord Records that we have the opportunity to background dance for in the game. Eight years later, he is reintroduced into Star Stable Online alongside his comeback single, Hey Yo, which he performed every 80 minutes during the opening week of Jorvik City Mall. Raptor has since come out with three more songs, including Do Da, which debuted during Jorvik City Fashion Week in spring of 2016. Star Stable hosted an open contest for the community to create a music video for Do Da, which Violet Flower Garden won and is now available to watch on Star Stable's YouTube channel. Fashion Week returns in the fall of 2016, to which Raptor performs his new single, Jorvik City, on stage every hour. The following December, Jorvik City gets a festive remix, which can be heard in Governor's Fall as Raptor cruises around on top of a car performing the new song. It seems as if Raptor has stepped out of the spotlight, as he no longer performs at Jorvik City Mall and hasn't released any new music since. Speaking of music, have you ever wondered where some of your favorite Star Stable tracks originate from? Undoubtedly, one of the most iconic Star Stable OSTs would have to be the old Silverglade soundtrack. This track was produced during the time Star Stable, the season writers, was in development and can be heard throughout all four games. More nostalgic soundtracks you probably recognize are also played throughout the season writers series. The Writing Hall has become one of the most popular areas in Star Stable Online, thanks to the popularization of eventing in the community. The Writing Hall received a revamp during the summer of 2021. But for old time's sake, do you ever want to just go back and experience the original Writing Hall? 
In games like Star Stable, The Winter Riders, you can! The original writing hall was created for this game, and was later reused in Star Stable Online. It received a few updates during its time in Star Stable Online, as it was originally one wide open arena, instead of one arena for flat work, and one arena for show jumping. The entrance of the writing hall was also one long hallway instead of two giant doors. This version of the writing hall can still be encountered in the Winter Riders. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned James's arch rival, Buck, one of the main antagonists of the fourth and final Starshine Legacy game, The Riddle of Dark Core. Much like Derek, Buck seems like just a regular guy, but in reality, has a much deeper involvement with the story than anticipated. They both haven't been utilized within Star Stable Online in the same role that they had in Starshine Legacy. In the Riddle of Dark Core, Buck works alongside Katya and has been depicted in ancient texts as an evil force fighting against four girls on horseback. In Star Stable Online, he has stood outside of Fort Maria since the debut of Epona in 2015. When I first saw him in Star Stable Online, I expected him to have a much greater involvement in the main storyline from there on out. Buck makes an appearance in a mini-quest centered around James. Tokens Postcards I'll leave my two cents here. Buck is associated with Fort Maria, and James is associated with Fort Pinta. What do they have planned? In a adrenaline-pumping chapter of Starshine Legacy 2, Lisa and Linda race back to Yorvik Stables to warn Herman about Mr. Sands' minions coming to kidnap him. Why is everyone trying to kidnap Herman? Leave him alone! Amidst the race, Lisa and Linda take a detour through a small village that seems to have quite an uncanny resemblance to Nomer's Highland in Star Stable Online. I'm sure we all have become well acquainted with Mario the Astronomer in Star Stable Online. Whether by participating in his daily observatory race, or helping him hunt for fallen stars. Little did we know, Mario has a brother that is quite a star himself. In the first episode of Star Academy, we meet Principal Maurice Bergen. He is the former frontman of the band Velvet Sky that was signed to Dark Horde Records, the same label Raptor was a part of. Maurice appears in all four of the Star Academy games, as well as the comics. He is a very friendly man, just like his astronomer brother. Undoubtedly, one of the most evil people on Yorvik has to be GED's founder, Mr. Kembo. We first encounter him early in the game, as he attempts to demolish Moreland stables and build luxury apartments on the land. It wasn't until we acquired the documents needed to prove that Thomas Moreland is the rightful owner of the land that Mr. Kembo was forced to seize his plan immediately. Once we travel to Silverglade, he could be found drilling oil in the Everwind Fields, which immediately causes environmental concerns as the oil leakage managed to pollute the grapes needed to harvest for wine production at the Silverglade Vineyard. The Baroness conducts a plan to stop Mr. Kemble's oil drilling by sending us to inscribe the serial numbers of the machinery. After sending the serial numbers to the Yorvik Council, we come to find out Mr. Kemble acquired the oil drilling machines illegally. Surprise, surprise. He complies with us and seizes the oil distribution. But before we leave, he tells us that this isn't the last we'll see of him, and that he's managed to pull off much greater schemes in the past. Just look at Hillcrest. Immediately, we are left in confusion. This quest was a part of the original storyline to debut with Star Stable Online in October of 2011. So naturally, back then, players didn't understand what Mr. Kemble meant by 
just take a look at what I did to Hillcrest. The Councilman of Silverglade describes the destruction of Hillcrest as a great tragedy when we inquire about it. We wouldn't get further context until the release of Epona four years later, where we venture through the ruins of what is now known as Old Hillcrest. The former residents of Old Hillcrest relocated and rebuilt a new village in southern Epona, naming it New Hillcrest in honor of their former town. Old Hillcrest was originally created for Star Stable, the Autumn Riders, where it was simply called Hillcrest. You can explore the village before its demolition in this game. One of the many reasons I prefer the riveting Starshine Legacy storyline is that the game takes place in both the high school and Jorvik stables. The characters in Starshine Legacy contribute a lot to my favor of its storyline, as they are all written very realistically and provide entertaining commentary in every chapter. When creating a story set in high school, it is only natural to include teachers. One of the strictest educators at Jorvik High is Mrs. Graham, who becomes involved in various quest lines throughout the four games. Whether it be denying Lisa entry into the hallway for not carrying books, trying to interfere with Anne's photo shoot, or overworking Linda. This has caused her to earn the nickname, The Wicked Witch of Jorvik, from some of the students at Jorvik High. If you think you recognize Mrs. Graham, but I haven't played any of the Starshine Legacy games yet, that's because her character model was later reused for the elderly residents of Firgrove in Star Stable Online. While we're on the topic of Fir Grove, did you know that this area wasn't originally created for Star Stable Online? Fir Grove was first discoverable in Star Stable The Autumn Riders. When developing Star Stable Online, the team took inspiration from the pre-existing layout of Fir Grove Village and the story centered around it. Riding into Fir Grove in The Autumn Riders, you encounter a lot of familiar concepts you've seen in Star Stable Online such as the stable hand requesting our aid in defending Firgrove from vicious wolves, hence why the village is surrounded by a wall in both games. Although, the wall in the Autumn Riders is made up of stone, the same stone wall used to design Silverglade Village in Star Stable Online. Let's head a little further down the road. Veildale Village was also originally created for the Autumn Riders and shares an uncanny resemblance to its online counterpart. Both games have the same stone bridge connecting the two pieces of land that are divided by the Silversong River. In the Autumn Riders, one of the main roads leading to Veildale takes the exact same route as Star Stable Online's Veildale, which is a rare similarity, seeing as the Autumn Riders takes place in a different part of Jorvik. There is a river house leading into Veildale in both games. Although, in comparison, the Veildale waterfall in the Autumn Riders is quite puny compared to Star Stable Online. Thank you all for accompanying me on this journey to the past. I highly encourage you all to dip your toes into the CD games whenever you get the chance. These games may be old, but they offer an unforgettable adventure that momentarily cures our nostalgic hearts. I look forward to hearing your feedback and feel free to leave a comment on some Easter eggs I may have missed. A part two may be in our future. For my new viewers, I post documentary style videos regarding star stable history and nostalgia surrounding the game. If you need the perfect soundtrack to accompany you whilst training your horses, then consider subscribing to my channel. My content doesn't stop there. I am also available on Instagram, posting nostalgic Star Stable edits from time to time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next documentary. This has been Kitty Spiderweb, signing out. Deep down.
everything you say and everything you do.